Welcome back to Dungeon Brew. Today we're continuing our series of narrative design, and today we're talking about NPCs. Stay tuned. Welcome to Dungeon Brew. Welcome back to Dungeon Brew. Today's hot topic is NPCs, which is more important than you know in storytelling within games, books, TTRPGs. Um, but I'm going to let you start this out, Josh. What is an NPC? So an NPC is the acronym for a non-player character. These are the elements that you put into a game that really drive the story forward. They bring the world to life. And like you said, you, you can't even play a game or write a book without them. Yeah, exactly. They're they're like that little extra that little extra hint of flavor to mm -hmm. the story. Um, I didn't know how old they actually were. They actually um, originated from D and D back in 1975 was when they first popped up um, as kind of like being in the spotlight of gaming. That's fascinating. I, I didn't know that. I I did know that. I mean, you can't play D and D without them. I mean, they have to be part of the story, and and they're such an integral piece. Usually when you have an NPC, they're supposed to serve one of three functions. And you see this again in movies, you see it in books, you see it in games. They should answer a question about the world in the story. So when you're creating them, they might have that purpose. Another purpose is that they might reinforce the story that you're already telling. And the third purpose is that maybe they create a new story arc or add some spin to an existing arc. So whenever you're thinking, oh, I need some more NPCs to populate this environment, they should be doing one of those three things. And you've probably seen this in your own experiences too. Yeah, they're not always just these simple, you know, uh, extra merchants that are sitting there in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they're the people that, yeah, you know, you're buying and selling and trading with. Or sometimes they're actually giving you legitimate, important information mm -hmm. to keep that story going. Um, other ones are going to, you know, bring tips um, or offer side quests, you know, and then you have those ones that kind of come along with the story for a while. Yeah, and even for those simple individuals that you have, like, populating your town, so the ones that you're not necessarily interacting with, like, they do reinforce the story you're telling. They're telling you about uh, the landscape, about the people, about the customs, the cultures, the traditions. So even those NPCs that your players may not be having a direct encounter with do bring the world to life. Uh, which kind of brings us to the concept or the idea of the three different types of uh, NPCs, which mm -hmm. are the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary um, characters. The primaries are the um, the ones that are always part of the story, mm -hmm. the ones that are always right there um, going along with the story, gaining something from the storyline. They have their own storyline. So if you think of like Sherlock Holmes, you have Watson um, in, you know, like the, um, in, I'm, I'm trying to think what like, well, I guess if you're looking at like shows and stuff like Sailor Moon, the other uh, or Luna the cat, the character that's just always there mm -hmm. would also be a primary character. Which is really important to, to kind of distinguish that, too, because you and I are both writers, we're authors. And I, I want to say this is borrowed from writing. I'm pretty sure it came from writing first. But when we think of primary characters, you're thinking of your main character that you're writing about. And so as a primary character, you might be thinking, no, I'm the primary character. Like I'm the player. I created the character in the game for the TTRPG, so I'm the primary character. And while that may be true, you do have NPCs that are primary characters too. And this was especially true in older editions when you would have to go get hirelings and individuals that would travel along with the party that had their own story arcs, as you mentioned. Their story is parallel to the plot that's being told. And that character is remaining in the spotlight the entire time. Those are your primary characters in TTRPGs. And you're right, you, you can't ignore them. They, they do exist. Yeah, it's kind of hard sometimes when you think about the games, the way they are um, over, I guess, these last like 10 years. It's a little bit different now um, where you can have primary characters that can be almost optional primary characters. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, you know, let them come with you or you just kind of let them go or leave them at some point of the story. It's a little bit about <laughs> secondary characters. What what are the definitive properties of them? Okay, so the secondary characters are the ones that kind of come in and out of the story. Um, they're, you know, offering information, they're keeping mm -hmm. that quest going, um, or reminding you of the storyline as you go. Um, I think uh, more back to Zelda, uh, Princess Zelda, how, um, you know, in Ocarina of Time specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, where she kind of comes into the story, um, not always as herself, but as somebody else, um, and uh, kind of 
you know, keeps you going, gives you in the uh, gives you the information to help you continue um, uh, to solve the problem or fulfill that quest. Yeah, I think about uh, just the the fact that those secondary characters are oftentimes the ones that are relaying important information. They kind of go off on their own side quest and disappear for a short bit, and then come back mm -hmm. and be like, "Oh, I went and investigated X, Y, and Z in the northern sector of the world, and here's where you need to be going next in order to complete your mission." Like they just kind of like pop in and out. They're super important. You know their names. You know their details, but they aren't traveling on your side twenty four seven. So would that make Lydia from Skyrim a primary character or primary NPC? I think that she'd be secondary, secondary because she you can choose whether or not you want her to be with you. And she doesn't have her own plot arc. Secondary characters usually oh, don't yeah. have their... I mean, they can have their own arc, but they don't have to have their own arc. Primaries usually always have an arc that's attached to them. There's something that they're doing. And again, it's in line with what the story arc is, where Lydia is just doing what you do <laughs> yeah that i mean again that kind of makes it a little harder to tell sometimes with uh certain games i'm on a zelda ocarina of time kick here i've never played that game so i'm like in the we i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about or who these people are but i'm sure the okay, people so, that i'm sure the people who have played the game are like oh yeah that makes complete sense well i'm trying to think of like what about those those okay i'll try to detach a little bit from there but in games where you have a lot of you know side quests that have to do with the main quest if you are fulfilling a quest for somebody who they have their whole background they have their whole backstory they have you know something that you're supposed to take but you have to solve a problem for them is that making them our tertiary character or once again a secondary character I because think... you fulfill that that plot or their plot as you go the secondary characters um maybe with you for bits of the game, but not full game. So in my mind, those are secondary. If they're giving you a plot arc to do or a quest to do and you're doing this with them and then they kind of disappear and they don't come back again, to me, that's secondary. Tertiary characters are the ones that kind of deal with the consequences of the story, whether those are positive or negative, and they're in the hands of the story. They're having to succumb to the events. So they're the ones that are getting burned down by dragon fire. They're the ones that are being oh, okay. cap captured by the guards in hell. They're, they're the nameless prisoner that you're rescuing from the dungeons and then watching him run off down the trail after you've rescued him. Um, they may have a name, but they don't really have a, a really full backstory that you've attached to them. They're serving just an immediate purpose, again, to bring that world to life and let you know that it's bigger than what you're seeing in front of you. Yeah, that's right, I guess. Um, but at the same time, it's like, is there a point where a tertiary character is going to have some backstory? I think of like the, the little kids, you know, the um, orphans, you know, that you go throughout a game, you meet an orphan, and, you know, whether you get the option to adopt the orphan or not, that orphan is just kind of there in the background, running around, always doing its thing, that you can always go back and talk to it. Um, mm -hmm. I think there was uh, something like that in Fable, if I remember right. It's been a while since I've actually played the game as much as I talk about it. But um, I, I, I think I, about... Huh? I was going to say, I haven't played that game in a decade, so I don't remember if it's yeah. the same <laughs> orphan that's coming and bothering you regularly or if it's a different one. Um, I'm always thinking about the one like back in like what 2000 I think it was like 2005 or something was the one that sticks I've played the other fables you know since then but that's the one that always comes to mm -hmm. mind I think it was one of the first um, starts of that story but um, I guess that you know because you can go and you can meet people who you know you can turn into a wife or you can go and adopt a kid or something like that um, but those are the characters you can always go back to but again they don't have those big backstories Mm -hmm. to them necessarily you have kind of the basic idea of where they're coming from or what their story is but it's not fleshed out and they very i don't even remember them having names to be honest with you which maybe they did but i don't remember them being named or um they're, they're essentially they, they served as a, a story device for your character to come back to and have another like responsibility that you had to enact on but the characters mm -hmm. themselves were replaceable Secondary characters, yeah. I don't think, is ever being replaceable. Your secondary character serves a purpose, and they have to be there, just like your primary characters do. Mm -hmm. Your tertiary characters, you can plug and play them, and it wouldn't matter. Yeah, which kind of takes us into that next, um, the, the next part here about characteristics of NPCs um, and how much... Huh? Oh, I was gonna say before, well, before we dive into that, I want to say that oftentimes we see that 
uh, narrative characters kind of fall into certain roles as well. And so you'll see them many times in gameplay. You have your villains, which we didn't really talk about too much. Sometimes these are usually primary characters too, um, but they can be secondary depending on the, how the game is formatted. Uh, then you have like your donors who give you the rewards for the quests that you do. And so you oftentimes see them played out. And those donors are oftentimes also your dispatchers, which are the quest givers. And the quest givers can many times um, be a secondary character. I'm thinking of the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon where you had the dungeon master who would just pop in and give you the quest to the adventures then pop out again. And then he'd pop back in and give them the reward for them completing the adventure. Uh, and then there are also like the helpers, the victims, and sometimes you have like a false hero, somebody who's running around behind you trying to claim credit for the, the accomplishments that you have. Um, but those are all also types of characters that kind of fit within this primary, secondary, tertiary um, mm -hmm. categorization. Okay, yeah. yeah. I misheard what you said. I was I thought you said primary and tertiary. I'm like, what's, <laughs> what's the bound or what's the jump there? <laughs> all right, but yeah, let's, let's dive into some of those characteristic pieces. Yeah. Okay. So this, um, okay. So our, do we want to go into physical characteristics here? Or are we talking about um, just everything all, all together? Uh, just everything all together. Things that you want to include, which are, yeah, physical characteristics are one of the things that you're going to want to include when you're sitting down. Because like here we're talking specifically about content. Uh, we're going to talk about the system design of some of these in a later video, but these are the contextual pieces that you want to have included when you're building your NPC for the first time. Yeah, I think the big thing is uh, making sure that your NPCs are going to, um, I mean, if you, I guess if you want to make them likable, you make them have something that kind of um, resonates with you, uh, makes them, it makes you be able to kind of connect on some way to kind of make sense or feel mm -hmm. empathic about the character or something. I think it's making them um, uh, realistic um, in some sense, or um, at least interesting, giving them some kind of quirk. Mm -hmm. um, now, I I talked to you a little bit about this before we started, but the number one NPC that comes to mind throughout all of my gaming life, she's left a mark. I've got some kind of like PTSD from this character. Um, <laughs> her name was Princess Ruto, again, from Ocarina of Time, from Zelda. It's a little... Um, when you first see her, she's like the um, Zora princess. She's like mm -hmm. a fish fish type of person. And you have to go to her to get the spiritual stone of water, which is one of the objects that you need throughout the game. Um, but she has her own story. She's kind of like this tomboy. She's this, you know, really annoying character that um, goes and ends up getting swallowed by a whale and she loses the stone. So you have to go and rescue her and get the stone and you have to mm -hmm. carry her the whole time. Now at um, at one point when you're done with uh, you know with getting the stone, she kind of floats up to the top of the water, and her head, like the shape of her head and everything, she's got kind of like one of those alien kind of heads, um, kind of like the way that she bobs in the water. It was like that specific, the the look of it, the the um, emotional connection that mm -hmm. you make with the character throughout it was so much that. For the rest of my life, if I was in a river or like at a lake, or if I went to like the ocean and I would see anything bob up, I would immediately think about Princess Rudo. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that is an NPC that has done really well, or the people did really well with her, uh, with, with making you either, you know, really like her, or really dislike her, but also using the physical characteristics of making this character that was important that kind of sticks with you. And I think that that is always when I think about, you know, creating my own, you know, NPC type characters and my own uh, stories or something is how many characteristics can you instill in a person that's going to either read the story, play the game that is going to be left with something with some kind of mark there that they carry with them and they think back, oh, that was that was a good character. Yeah, that's the real challenge, I think, to creating NPCs, because not only do you want them to be memorable within the game, you also want them to kind of hold some place in a person's heart outside of the game. So they keep coming back and remembering who that character was. Uh, we sit around in our gaming groups and we play games and we talk about characters from past games or we use references to them regularly because they've held such a special place within our heart and it's really hard to find universal uh, appearances or mannerisms or um, attributes about them that kind of carry across a larger what's for 
populace, like to hit a lot of different people where you can capture those and make sure that you're really bringing that character to life. So everyone's like, oh yeah, there's something that resonates about this person that's going to stick with me beyond the gameplay. Yeah, and I think it's especially important when we're talking about the you know primary and secondary um, NPCs. Um, of mm-hmm. course, you know there's the occasional like you know the fact that I remember the little you know orphan kid from Fable. I could almost remember what it looks like. Um, <laughs> you know that that's not I think as important, but I do think that you know it, it helps with the immersion in the game mm-hmm. and the storyline. So other things you want to look at doing when you're creating these characters to make them believable, which I want to really tackle that here in a minute too, but. Again, you're looking at their appearance, you're looking at their mannerisms, but you also want to consider what are your motivations for your NPCs and making sure that you're attaching some sort of motivations to them and having them aligned with the morals of the NPC. And these are things that I think about when I'm building them out. I'll have a little spreadsheet and I'll put in, this is what they look like. Here's you know their attributes, their abilities, the, the weapons that they're carrying. But I always include little mannerisms. You know, Do they click their tongue when they talk? Do they slur their words together? Uh, do they have a high-pitched accent of some kind? Which we'll talk about dialogue in another video. Um, but also, what is their motivation? What is it that they want to accomplish? I don't always make these for tertiary characters, but you should always have a motivation and some sort of moral compass for your primary and secondary characters. And this is, I think, where it also gets uh, fun to get deeper into the world building as well, because mm-hmm. then you get to tie in some of their um, intentions or their desires with what that world that they're in can provide yeah. them. What are the, uh, you know, the rules around, you know, their religions or their politics, or you know, if you're talking to, um, you know, uh, an NPC that is a little. Um, you know, the poor or something, you know, their intentions and desires are going to be limited by what that by what they can do in that specific world. Mm-hmm. And what you're really diving into now is that believability piece that I want to make sure we capture before we end today is looking at how do you make the NPC believable so that when you're coming across them in this course of gameplay, you're like, oh, this is a real person because we know we play lots of games where we do that. And it's like, this is a computer generated person (laughs) and they don't Mm -hmm. feel real and then they're not going to stick in the imagination like you were talking about so there's usually six parts uh, that are applied to what personhood is it's rationality intentionality stance uh reciprocity reciprocity uh communication Crossity, uh, (laughs) communication and consciousness but when you're creating npcs you primarily want to focus on making sure that the NPC is rational and that their actions match with their intentions. And if you can do those two things, you really increase the believability of the NPC that you have. And so you're looking to have those things match when you're creating them. And that lets you go into like, what's their personality? What's their emotional state like? Uh, What are they motivated by? Like I talked about, what relationships do they have in their world that make their life real? And do they have a life? outside of the function that you gave them within the course of gameplay and do all those things match what their rational level is and how they think and their intentions do, do their actions and match their intentions and you're able to show how that's connected to personality emotion life all those things mm-hmm. and if you can do that it makes them believable and then it sticks within the player's mind mm-hmm. although having one irrational npc is always fun well, <laughs> one who's always gonna dive out there and be crazy or overreact to something and kind of keep the story going in a different way or give the option of a story in a different way. Which that is a fair statement. Rationality is on a continuum. It's on a scale and it does slip into irrationality. But if you make an NPC that's irrational, it still they have to have their actions match that irrationality. It should fit mm-hmm. that character's design that you have made for them. Yeah. I just um, remembered actually a few days ago, I uh, came across this link. I shared it on um, LinkedIn. It's probably still one of the top things there, but Mm -hmm. about how they're going to incorporate, um, this is, I guess, more video games. Um, They're going to start adding AI NPCs that are actually going to respond like an AI Mm -hmm. robot. Um, So I'm super excited to see uh, where that's going to go. But apparently there's been so many complaints around NPCs in the gaming industry Mm -hmm. so far that um, they're really trying to dive into this. Um, I mean, they say like 88% of gamers are like, they, they really want good NPCs. They don't want, you know, Mm -hmm. just boring, you know, people walking around. They want to be able to interact with people to go and, you know, hear more stories or have, 
you know, interactions that feel more real. So I'm excited to see where that's going to go. Yeah, I've seen many articles coming out with the development of AI systems and being incorporated into games. And it's going to be an interesting continued conversation as they start having AI generated everything within gameplay and start taking people out of the equation. Um, mm -hmm. It'll be fascinating. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Very chaotic, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what we have for you guys today in talking about NPC creation. Uh, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please do hit the little bell so you're notified for our next video, and we'll see you next time.